A reading from the Gospel of John. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumour spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. One of the things I have joined in 2020, after many years of avoiding it, was Facebook. My reluctance to join was not because I didn't see its usefulness or enjoy seeing photos of friends. Connection is a wonderful thing. No, the issue didn't lie with Facebook. It lay with me. You see, I confess that on occasions I can be tempted to take my eyes off following Jesus and focus on others instead. And if I'm feeling low, the temptation can be to compare myself unfavourably to my friends. Today in the church we remember John the Gospel writer, fisherman and friend of Jesus. And in our passage we find Peter saying, What about him, Lord? And Jesus replying, What's that to you? John and Peter's lives had been intertwined a long time, and now, with the resurrection of Jesus, it looked like these friends were going their separate ways. Everything in life was being shaken, including their ability to emotionally manage themselves. Jesus' statement, you follow me, is not a harsh, but a healthy one. He knows how easy it is to get distracted. Jesus has experienced every emotion and thought process that we have, and he knows the human condition inside out. That's thrilling, because God not only identifies, but has plans for all of us with all the richness of our diversity. There's no need to feel condemned. So, now when I make unhelpful speculation in my head about the life of another, I try to stay curious about my behaviour. I ask, what can I learn? What's missing in my life? Is there something I need to say sorry for? It's not for me to interfere with what's going on between others and God. I want to love my friends. And one of the secrets of doing that is being secure in the love God has for me. So, today... I leave you with just one thought. In this passage, John is described as the disciple that Jesus loved. I wonder, is that a description you could use of yourself? Amen.